Hey guys, I'm walking out to my car right now. I want to talk about the spring update and something that's in there, which people uh, may be overlooking. Everybody says it's cool, you know, a lot of other YouTubes are covering the tutorial, but I think there's something bigger picture long term about it that is going to be really helpful. What I want to point out about the spring update is the new option at the top. Fastest, best amenities, or fewer charging stops. Now, this is new to the spring update, and this was never here before. And I feel like this is going to help educate people that don't take the time to learn uh, in depth the way some people are doing. Maybe if you're watching this channel, you care about learning. But this has a lot to do with understanding the charging curve. It sort of teaches it to you without you even knowing. But before this update, you would get your route given to you by Tesla and you would take it. Now, what happened a lot of time previously was you would get charging stops that felt a little long and that you wouldn't need to do. And maybe you would have a charging stop that said you needed to do 30 minutes. But that's actually, in my opinion, quite a long time. And if you were to open the nav and look at where it was trying to send you, there would be another supercharger even closer that you could make it to. So if you were to leave earlier, you would be able to get to another supercharger with a lower state of battery and optimize your curve better and end up charging less. So now this essentially is helping you do that. You can see with fastest, you're getting shorter times on your charging stations and you're doing it more. Even this is semi uh, conservative. You can be more aggressive with it. But then this is fun. Best amenities adds, how much does it add? 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So that's kind of nice. And then fewer stops it goes up to 15 hours, 13 minutes. Uh, and so that, if you keep in mind what I'm mentioning about the car charging curve, you can understand that since the battery charges slower at the top of the battery pack, a high percentage, you'd be charging longer and into that part of the battery pack. Therefore you're charging slower, which is what brings up your overall arrival time to 15 hours and 13 minutes from 14 hours. So you're losing an hour by charging too much slash at the higher percentage of your battery. Most people seem to do this. And then you'll see YouTubers that are putting up content saying my first long EV road trip. So take it from me, I've been on them. I've been on long road trips. I've done this uh, here that I'm showing. Uh, New York to Savannah, but you don't need to charge as long as the Tesla says, especially if you look up where it's sending you, you can get to another charger sooner, most of the time, and then charge less where you are and be charging in the 5% to 40% range, and you will be maximizing your speed. You can do it way faster than the Tesla says you can. This new update is helpful because although it won't fully max you out, it is giving you a better option than it used to have. So I think this is really gonna teach people uh, without them knowing it, a little bit about a charging curve. Hopefully people start to understand that and it improves charging etiquette as well because you will be less likely to stay at a supercharger past 60%. I personally don't like to stay much past that unless there is a dead zone where I really have to. If you look at the Tesla charging curve for Model Y and Model 3, you'll notice that when you get to around 35% state of charge, you're going to be charging at 150 kilowatts and then you'll be tapering even lower. So, what does that also say? A 250 kilowatt charger is pointless to go to 
unless you're below 35% battery state of charge. Now, obviously one thing to keep in mind, a busy 150 kilowatt supercharger, you might have to share power. So then there is a, a reason not to go to them. However, it's something that a lot of people don't know. I have seen people on YouTube's, like I said, posting videos from some of their first long drives, and they will be saying things like, ooh, I'm, I'm gonna switch to this 250 kilowatt charger from this 150 because I'm, I'm only getting 140 kilowatts right now. However, if you look at their state of charge, they're at 40%. Therefore, switching will be completely pointless. And that's just a little bit of education that hopefully we can get out to the masses and it will improve supercharging for everybody because you will get to your destination faster. You will tell people you got to your destination faster. It will make people think EVs don't take as long to charge. And the second and and the last benefit would be chargers will not be clogged up for as long, making it better for everybody. So this is sort of my thoughts on why this, this update here is good. I assume that most people, I, I hope it's not a wrong assumption, will want to use fastest or best amenities. And I've noticed by clicking on best amenities a few times, it's not that bad of a change from fastest. If people are clicking fewer stops, maybe that's because they are going to be doing a restaurant dinner type long charge, but most people usually want to get to where they're going, I think. And this fastest option is really optimizing the drive in the car more towards its charging curve. I'm going to put up some pictures of some charging curves just so if you're not familiar with it, you can see. And what you'll notice is the line on the left is very high and it tapers down lower to the right. That's the speed of the electricity going into your car. And as it goes to the right, you're seeing what, what that means is the state of charge is going higher. So therefore your kilowatts entering are getting lower. And understanding that sort of unlocks how you should charge and how it works and how to optimize, which is why when you start a road trip, you have your highest amount of battery. You, maybe you're leaving at hundred percent. You want to drive that down all the way to 5%, you know, for your own comfort. If you start charging at 50%, you're just wasting your time because your charge is not as fast and it's extending your road trip significantly. If this was helpful to you, please uh, like and subscribe and I'll keep the thoughts coming. Thank you. Oh, if you're still here, this is my uh, first video where I got a mic. I hope the audio is much better. Uh, so we'll see. I will see when I post it.